As a reminder to everybody, we're here with Dr. Daryl Ray, author of the, the book, The God Virus, uh, How Religion Infects Our Lives and Culture. And we've actually got a local caller, Richard. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. We'll need a little more volume on the speaker. Okay. Uh, heard the doctor saying about uh, that he don't like uh, anybody imposing their views. And, and I just wanted to ask him in regards to uh, evolution. Uh, does he believe that we evolved from monkeys? Well, first off, evolution is not the belief that we evolved in, from monkeys. Evolution is a scientific discipline that studies biodiversity. It studies how simple, co simple life forms become more complex life forms, how species that are able to adapt have a better chance of surviving to the next generation than species that can't adapt. So that's an entirely different subject. Well, I, th I think I know where, you were, where you're where going with this. What, what was your actual uh, question? The doctor was uh, talking about uh, not assessing or does, doesn't like uh, people to impose their views. And, uh, and I wanted to ask the doctor in regards to that, uh, does it believe that we evolved from uh, monkeys, which is taught in schools uh, continuously? And I've seen, you know... You want uh, the quick answer to that? try evidence, and, and uh, I haven't mm -hmm. seen no evidence of it. Well, well, then you haven't looked, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, the short answer is we didn't evolve from monkeys specifically. Go read a little bit more and call back someday after you know a little more about evolution. Yeah. I think that the thing that he might have been getting to is this idea, you know, because we, we, we oftentimes talk about things in, in simple terms because we don't want to explain for 20 minutes what we're talking yeah. about. So when you say, I'd rather people didn't impose their beliefs on us, I think he was planning on going down the route that people who accept evolution are trying to impose those, those, that belief on, the, on people like him who don't accept evolution. And the answer is um, teaching people reality is not an imposition. That's a good yeah. way to put it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, facts that inconvenience your ideology of choice that's not yeah. the same thing as, you know. And somebody else here in Austin, we've got Lance on the line. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, what's How your you question? Uh, yes, uh, firstly, I just want to uh, commend Matt. I think um, I've been watching him for a little while, and I think he's, uh, he's very intelligent, very smart, and very patient. <laughs> I've been looking at, uh, I've been seeing how, you know, some kind of, some theists present the same argument, and I can understand why you get frustrated. And hopefully, me being a theist, <laughs> hopefully you won't get as frustrated with me, but I just wanted to say that before I asked him. Boy, question. that's a long-winded way of making sure I'm nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a guest on the show, so what what yeah. question have you got for us? Won't necessarily uh, work. Well, I wanted to get you guys, uh, uh, what, what do you consider proof of God? I, hear you, I, I, I noticed that you're pretty adamant about that, so I wanted to know, what did you consider actual proof? Actually, I wouldn't Which be God? adamant. Which God are you proving? Flying Spaghetti uh, Monster sorry, or what, Zeus? What'd you say? Which, which God are you after? The Flying Spaghetti Monster or Zeus or Neptune? No, I'm not applying any religion to, to my question, just, just as a creator. I and mean, I'm asking, what do you consider proof? Well, first off, we would have to hear from the believer in that particular creator, we'd have to first have an understanding of what specific creator they wanted us to believe in. Okay. And then all we could do is respond to the evidence that they think is good and they present it to us and then we'll evaluate it. Usually what we ask on this program and what Matt always asks is when a theist calls or emails us or what have you, all right, please just tell us what you believe and then why you believe it. And then if the reasons you believe something if they're good enough for you, then just give us those reasons and we'll judge at that point. Okay. And, and not to be, I don't want to be overly pedantic, but you, you seem to be, you know, you're using proof and you're probably just using it in a colloquial sense, but I, I would never use that word. It's, it's not, I, I don't seek proof in God. I seek evidence and then you evaluate the evidence and at some point, based on the type of claim it is and the nature of the evidence, you either have sufficient evidence to justify your belief or you don't. And so okay. I can't really say, I mean, people have asked before, what, what kind of evidence would it take for you to believe in, you know, my particular God or the Christian mm -hmm. God or, or whatever. Um, we've come up with examples, you know, and some people consider them outlandish. 
I don't even care to really do that anymore. The question is, what on earth would make anybody think that this is real in the first place? Clearly, I mean, I haven't seen the evidence for this, and every time I ask somebody to present evidence, what I get is anecdotes and logical fallacies. That's it. Those, those are the two I things see. that show up. I really, if there was something else, then I could maybe evaluate it. And it may be the case that there's, n that there's not any evidence that could sufficiently demonstrate this, depending right, on the claim, right. because the claim is such that it, it couldn't possibly be true and couldn't possibly be demonstrated. But go back and, you know, you can watch some of the stuff that, that Tracy's done, particularly with regard to, you know, whether or not something manifests in reality it is therefore testable, um, as we went over um, in, uh, oh boy, I feel bad. Well, well can, I, can I say something real quick? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, no, I know, now as far as, I mean, as far as evidence, I understand what you guys are saying, but, you know, it, it, as far as existence is concerned, and I'm presenting this more as a question, as far as existence is concerned, you know, some things exist that had not been proven to humanity for a while. For instance, you know, just for shallow instance, people thought, theorized that the earth was flat, and there was no way to actually prove that or have evidence of it until later. But that, yes. didn't, mean, yes. that didn't mean that it wasn't, you know, flat. Yes, Lance, and if God is in that category, then the time to believe that God exists is once there's been sufficient evidence. The time ah, to believe, okay, it doesn't right. matter if, if back 50,000 years ago, if some guy, uh, you know, running around killing lions thought the earth was flat and somebody else said, nope, I think it's round. Well, he didn't have any evidence, so he wasn't justified in his belief. It doesn't matter that he happened to be correct. What matters was, was his belief supported by sufficient evidence? You, you know, it could be... I, I suppose there's a possibility that there could be some God and that all these God people will turn out to be correct in some way. I'm, I'm yeah. sure that they'll all adopt the same one when it's proven. <laughs> but you know what? They still weren't justified at the time they held those beliefs. They were still dishonest right. in representing those beliefs. And we were still completely justified in rejecting those beliefs until such time as the evidence became available. Uh, I completely understand. Appreciate well, it. All right. Thanks, Lance. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.